Welcome back to the channel. We've got something slightly different for you today in that we're going to actually drive a car. So this belongs to James at Auto Finesse and he's been back and forth out of the workshop over the last couple of years, having extra modifications done to it. And we're going to run you through all of those in detail. So let's jump in the car and share our thoughts. Welcome to the interior of the M2 Club Sport, sat in two SPG XLs, very comfy it is. Yeah, very, very comfy. It's a nice seat the car is. Yeah, it's a good seat. Yeah. It is the archetypal Club Sport seat, really. Yeah. Holes are a bit small for me. Yeah, a bit on the old, the old shoulders. So obviously with these seats, James has gone with the SPG XLs, so they're yeah. obviously a little bit wider. Let's rewind. So first of all, who is James? Why has he got this car? <laughs> and why has he made it into this Club Sport machine? So James um, owns a deta detailing company, Auto Finesse. Um, so obviously he goes to a lot of shows, right? Lots of static car shows, lots of detailing, show and shine based things. And from what I gather, the conversations I've had with him, he was looking for a bit more of a thrill car like experience and track days was the obvious way to get that. So using the cars instead of parking them up, um, obviously there's lots of different ways you can enjoy cars, mm. but he was looking for a bit more of a driving experience so picked an m2 really because of the amount of stuff that's available for them you can basically pick and choose different stuff modify everything yeah one of the first things that um he said he he did was the map change so what a lot of people do for street cars to make them feel really spiky aggressive like they got a bit more power than maybe they have mm -hmm. is they make the throttle very sensitive so when you're on circuit you don't really want that because if the throttle is really sensitive, you can't be on that line of traction and no yeah. traction and sort of dance around it. What happens is you add a bit more throttle and the car goes, okay, I'm going to add a lot more throttle. Yeah. And it's uncontrollable. And especially on these where they make so much torque from yeah. like almost 2000 RPM the whole way to the red light, more or less. You've got, I think this car now is about 700, 800 new meters, something like that. So much. So you can have that for such a broad um, sort of range of the, the, the um, sort of like a torque map of the engine yeah. but if all of a sudden you're putting down the throttle at like 50 percent and it's actually open like 80 percent that's an absolute nightmare for trying <laughs> to get any traction coming out of the corner definitely so i think the best way to tackle this build um obviously we've gone into quite a lot of detail really early on in our conversation let's go nose to tail of the car and how you can build basically a replica of this one really simple to do on these cars is get power yeah so that's that's locked off you can get 500 odd horsepower relatively easily even yeah. more than that perhaps um, but something they do suffer with is the cooling now we've addressed this on this vehicle by adding the CSF charge air cooler when you remap these cars and you up the boost um, it exacerbates the issue so that's an essential part to keep those charge air temperatures down in addition to that you can see in through the front grills we've got the CSF charge air heat exchanger in the front of it which comes with a rock guard 
so any of that debris that gets on the circuit can't go through it um, and that helps keep the charge air temps down and we've also got a DCT cooler which keeps the gearbox cool when you're shifting through the gears um, that generates heat so that enables you to be out on circuit for a lot longer. So if you want the engine to be producing the maximum amount of power all the time, then you want to keep those charge temps as cool as possible. So how you do that, you upgrade the charge cooler, upgrade the heat exchanger for the charge cooler, and then you can keep that cooling temperature really, really nice and low and consistent. And the big thing with these cars, especially as they are getting older now, mm -hmm. some of these cars, obviously the early S55s are nearing sort of like 10, 12 years old. Um, is that the charge cooler can actually leak mm. and then internally. That, yeah, internally and that water can go inside the engine which can lead to catastrophic failures so let's just eliminate that <laughs> by upgrading the charge cooler you'll never have that problem with these cars as they start to get older and older you're going to have more of these issues and especially on a hot day of the track you really want to upgrade that to make sure you're spending all of your time on track rather than having to nurse sort of issues on the car. So I think for a lot of people that'll be the first hurdle, like the actual thing that stops them doing track time yeah. is the temperatures of the box if it's a DCT and then oil temperature really if it's anything else. Yeah, obviously talking about the front end of the car and then obviously the front end also the suspension side of things. Yeah. So as we were sort of talking about suspension earlier on, uh, this car came with um, like KW Club Sports which are really, really good suspension mainly i would probably say for a standardish road car that is used on track and then when you start to add in like super grippy tires like it's the extra example, load is yeah it's the extra load so like your derezas um you start putting bigger brakes on it you start being more confident as a driver so you start exploring um like more of the curbs on track um putting a lot of energy through the suspension yeah they tend to um the spring rates, first of all, there's not quite as wide spring rate selection. So about a year ago, we fitted the Moton three-way suspension, so really high-end motorsport suspension. So it's got three-way adjustments, so it's got your rebound on the top of the damper, and then it's got your high and low-speed compression, which is on this catheter. So you've got a separate reservoir, so there's a lot more oil in the system. Obviously, what a damper is doing is it's converting that kinetic energy into heat, essentially. So if you can have a bigger heat sink for it, you're going to extend out the performance of that um, particular damping. So the reason why we switched over to the Moton three ways is because um, the car was basically spent a couple of years on the KW Club Sports um, and then they kind of came to the end of their service life, whereby um, there was a lot of seal wear and then also the shaft is actually bent as well. But what these Motons have is they actually have a shaft guide in there, which is quite a large shaft guide and supports the shaft at full troop. So you won't have any of those issues with regards to um, sort of like the seal being compromised. Well, this is what I mean when I talk about consumer level um, products and mm -hmm. then professional products, which is what the Motons really are, the professional race products versus a street product has been modified to be useful on the circuit. There's, are you coming from this end upwards or this end down? And really the Moton is a professional motorsport damper that's mm -hmm. been taken down to something that people could actually use on exactly. the street. Quite quickly you have the blow off valves as well. So the, the blow off valves are something that's really handy, not only on the street, like if you go over curbs on the street, but also on the track as well. Yeah. So if you have like a really, really high, um, high force compression event, it'll actually just open up that blow off valve and just absorb all that energy, which is really nice. What I mean in my comment is it's not a, a slight on any brand or um, it's just what's appropriate for your use. Yeah. And it's really about selecting something that's going to last a long time. Exactly. Give the performance so you need. This, there's more noise vibration harshness because yeah. Uh, you've got solid top mounts front and rear um, you've got much higher spring rates as well um, so there's a lot less noise isolation so if you're someone spherical bearings on the spherical spherical bearings, yeah so if you're someone who doesn't want to have any mvh uh, i was only going to use their car on the street we probably wouldn't recommend the moton three-way kit on your car because it is going to produce mvh but then the trade-off you have is extreme performance mm -hmm. and durability so that's that leads us on to another point, which is quite good, is that this is really a consultation between mm -hmm. like, Regal as a brand and the customer. And you've got to explore these things and able to, you've got to have discussions to find the right products. You can't just say, hey, this guy wants to go fast, let's do this. 
because he might also want to go to a class and coffee every now and yep. then. He might also want it to look really um, subtle and not have massive wheels, big tires, big brakes and things like that. So the magic of it all for me, I think, is just to make sure that it fits the person's lifestyle, but also gives the performance and longevity that they need as well, which is, is where we're at with this, I think. James has a really nice time on track with it. Mm -hmm. Relatively low amount of servicing, really. It's normal engine servicing. You put tires on it. The brakes are well equipped enough so that you don't have to change pads all the time. Brakes is something that's really important for a track car and this one's no exception. So we've got three 78 mil discs on the front, three 80 on the back, four pots on the back, six pots on the front. And if you can see down here, you'll see the AP Racing label. That's really famous. Fantastic brands to use on your track car. And these are the Pro 5000R calipers, which you'll see on professional race cars in all sorts of series. So great choice on this car. So when you're actually pushing the brakes harder and harder and harder on track, the recovery time is faster between stops. And also it pushes on that sort of brake fading much longer. I don't think James has actually experienced any brake fade. <laughs> so similar car. to the suspension, you're equipping it with something that is almost over spec yeah. so that you retain um, great headway really in the performance so the performance stays the same for yeah. longer exactly yeah so serviceability is less or service requirements are less because you're no longer operating at like 110 percent of its capacity yeah you're now like hovering 80 70 percent for argument's sake to give you an idea and these calipers are ones that are used for in professional race cars for exactly. exactly it's the yeah. industry standard really mm -hmm. at each of the four corners on this car we've got Dereza tires and we've got Titan 7 TD6E wheels. They're 18 by 10 all round, and this enables James to rotate the tires as they wear and get the best life he can out of them. Some people run 18 by 10s. Some people run like 18 by 10 at the front, 18 by 11 at the rear. 18 by 11 is faster, but the 18 by 10, obviously you can swap tires round, which is nicer if, for example, if rears have come to the end of their life, just swap them over, get a little bit more sort of time and life out of the tires. Um, also, it looks quite good as well. Quite like the look of it. Yeah, I like this. Great. It's quite difficult to stuff them in the wheel arches. Um, M twos do have a little bit of clearance, um, less clearance than M four, for example. Um, but yeah, it does look cool. The steering wheel holding on to is a KMP. Yep. KMP steering wheel. This is a really, really cool piece of kit. You retain all of the factory buttons on here, so you've got M one, M two, horn. You've got your hands-free stuff. You've got your speed control for your cruise control. So basically, that's like a racing steering wheel, but with all the there's no drawbacks. All the original stuff is still on there, and you've got these really tactile carbon fiber shift paddles, which feel much better than the original ones to use. And um, obviously, you've got it snaps off, like comes straight out of the car. Mil spec connector, really easy to fit again. I love that bit of kit. There's the horn. Love love the use of a horn. <laughs> um, it's just great. So. Traditionally, you wouldn't be able to have a yeah. suede type steering wheel. Smaller diameter as well than the original. Really, really nice. Just fits and works. Love that. Underneath us, which you can hear now, you've then got a four exhaust system. So it's a full Akrapovich on this car, uh, from the down pipes the whole way to the back with uh, some really nice turned down tips yeah. that James got sorted. What's like an RX-7, uh, they call them lobster tails. Yeah, lobster tails. So we did quite a cool feature on this because James was saying that um, he was hitting noise limits all the time. Yeah. So in the software, in Sports Plus, that's when it's um, the valves are completely open, so it's almost always gonna um, gonna like pop off the noise yeah, ears. Yeah. But there's no um, no like crackles and pops or anything like that. We did have that initially. James hated it, so we just removed it. Um, <laughs> amount of taste. Yeah, amount of taste. And then um, Sport Mode is full power again with the valves closed. So from that, you're able to use full power on the track whilst being able to not set off any of the noise limits, anything like that, 
and then um, the normal mode the efficiency mode is sort of your wet mode if you like but to be honest you can still drive it in the wet in in sport mode and the on nice here as well you got m1 m2 on the steering wheel which is great yeah so we've got all that sounds amazing uh with the software as well obviously there's a lot more power a lot more boost so you can hear all the spooling noises through the turbos as well it's actually nice really a controllable on the throttle it's, you still have a bit of build up mm -hmm. as the boost comes in but it's not like a conventional one whereby the boost all comes in your wheel spin everywhere yeah your traction control comes in and then you're just sort of riding traction control mm -hmm. It's pretty smooth. I think a lot of that's also to do with the wave track in the back. So something these cars really, really struggle with is traction, especially with the amount of power and torque that these cars have. So the factory differential in these cars, yes, it does have a like M performance differential. So it's like a ELSD. So it's a mechanical um, plate style differential that then varies the locking force depending on what the software of the car wants to do. And there's a very unnatural feeling behind the wheel. And when you're sort of under traction, you're on the limit of grip and it does some really weird things that makes the car um, not behave in a desirable way. So what we do on these cars is we fit a wave track limited slip differential and that is a true mechanical differential. So we basically chuck the electric motor in the bin, we program the ELSD out of the car and then you have a much smoother operation of the differential. You have a lot more grip at the rear. So there's a lot more confidence inspiring. It's a lot easier to drive the car near or at the limit with that differential. One of the things that I've found is, especially on circuit, if you get into a situation where you slightly come on throttle too soon in the corner or you're going a little bit too fast in the corner when you do get back on the throttle, the rear starts to step out. It's not really that instance that you have a problem with the, with the stock differential. It's when you start to progress out of the corner and try and keep the car sliding, you'll have this like lock unlock sort of thing, especially when you come up to straight, straight ahead. Yeah. And then when you come into straight ahead and you're still on the power, you get that Mustang situation where you're like one wheel in left and right. That makes yeah. it really difficult to control and predict. Exactly. So the, the wave track just makes it from way more progressive, way more linear, it's just super, super easy to apply the throttle. The amount of locking that you want is the amount of locking that you get. So it just feels nice and smooth, really. Yeah, and you then, can get really nice dirty slides with yeah. the wave track, it's brilliant. It's great. <laughs> to be honest, although it does have all of these race components on it, mm -hmm. you know, the, the back end's all spherical, um, the suspension's got spherical joints, solid top mounts, um, big brakes on it that really shouldn't be on the street, to be quite honest, they're <laughs> very much a race caliper. It's really well behaved. Like, I, I could see maybe at 37 years old, I wouldn't drive this every day to work, but I could if I wanted yeah. to. I mean, if you uh, wanted to use this on the street or if we were to build this for street use, you'd go for softer spring rates. Yeah. You would go for um, some brake pads that had a little bit more um, bite at sort of like low temperatures. So low at noise. Um, low at noise. So there's a few things that you can do to this package to make it more road biased. But then, of course, it's going to make it more road biased and take it away from the track. Yeah, it really depends what you're going to use it for. If you're solely going to use it on circuit, you will probably want to go full ball. If you're going to use it on the street more, then you just start to tailor it back. Yeah. And that's where the consultation comes in. Personally, I absolutely love driving this car. Mm -hmm. I think it's hilarious that you can have something that's this fast on circuit, street legal. Doesn't seem to make 100%. a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely love it. And you've got the... Um, other bits that James has done to the outside, so you've got a carbon bonnet, carbon yeah. splitter, you've got the carbon rear wing on there as well. So it looks the part as well as obviously sounding, feeling, braking, all that stuff. My favorite thing about it um, is the motor on suspension, I think, and the yeah. fact that you do have the option. So like at the Nürburgring now, for example, they've installed a lot more curbs. Yeah. I haven't been there and driven it since it's been changed. But I see a lot of people really struggling with a couple of corners there now that you used to take all of the curb on. Mm -hmm. And with the motor on, with the blow off valve, you've got more chance of being able to ride those curbs than with any of the other suspension yeah, systems. Yeah, definitely. And it's not something that really want to sort of like talk about, but not a lot of people know about Moton. But Moton is actually fitted to currently one of the fastest, well, the fastest F8 X platform car. So, it's basically the kit to get. It's always a bit of a tug of war with all the lads at the ring, isn't it? Obviously, yeah. trying to outdo each other and everything. But that's how things progress. And um, up to this point, the Moton suspension has been a bit of a secret weapon for people. Um, and now we're telling you all about it. <laughs> telling everyone, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it works great. Um, 
we've done a couple kits on street-ish cars recently, mm. and um, I've been surprised how well they ride, given how high performance orientated they are. Yeah, super flexible. Like with the G87 we did recently, we put um, a front axle lift on the front, motor on one ways, like an already really well handling car that handled its weight well. Handled even better, so full motorsport to, to street use. Yeah, it's all got you covered. So I think that's the the description on this M2, just about finished. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that James is finished with this car for now, and this is how it's going to be for the next lot of track days. He's going to do. I'm yep. not sure if there's any other modifications he wants to do. Um, as with anything, these projects can continue, but. Yeah, it's just going to escalate and escalate and escalate, really. Yeah, yeah, I think spend more time on track enjoying the car, really. I think all that's left is really but to enjoy it. So, um, we've got some lovely country roads opening up in front of us. So, we're going to enjoy the car. So that concludes our drive and our video on this M2. <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed it. I think we have. We've had a good conversation about some of the bits. Mm -hmm. Actually forgot some of the things that we did to it over the course of the development of this car. So it's a good reminder. And uh, I think it's obvious to see why people use these cars so much and how why you see so many. Um, you see like in the track time classifieds and stuff, built M2 for sale. And people think that they can go for the next thing. 911s are often the next thing, mm -hmm. um, but they deliver a totally different experience. And you see people go back into M2s again. So. Yeah, as a as a front engine rear wheel drive car, this is probably one of the best packages to if you want to have like a cub sport build, a motor sport build. This is one of the best platforms to sort of start on. Power, grip, yeah, tons of power, tons of torque, tons of grip, tons of mods as well to individualize it to exactly what you want to use for your particular purpose, how noisy you want it, how quiet you want it, how you want it to handle, how you want it to ride, all the interior bits and pieces yep. as well. It's definitely, this particular car is definitely one of my favorite builds that we've done because it does drive so well on the on the track and it is so rewarding. Um, obviously, if you're interested in any, any of these individual elements like suspension, brakes, tires, any of these parts of this car, then you can pick out those parts on shop.reglautosport.com. And if you're interested in having something built exactly the same as this or something similar, then you can submit a contact form on the website and contact us. I'm going to put this car away now because otherwise I'm going to end up on Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> eBay, Auto Trader, trying to get myself an M2. I've really been on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't done already, then give us a thumbs up. If you want to watch some of our other videos that YouTube thinks you'll like, then click up here. If you want to watch some other videos in the same playlist, then click here. And if you haven't done already, then hit the subscribe button right here.